Hello, Rachel Field. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ron Reviews. Today, I will be reviewing. It's going to be a short review. It's not going to be anything long. I just wanted to do this before uh, time got ahead of me. Um, I had a couple projects, a couple exams I had to prepare for, so I figured I might as well do a quick review before I go into hiatus for like two weeks. So that being said, um, I can't really promise I'll be making any videos in the next couple weeks, but I, I might. I'm going to aim for it. It depends on how work and school is. But I will be reviewing today the Silent uh, for the Xbox 360. Now this has also come out on PS3 and it consists of two games Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3. And those are arguably the best um, Silent Hills before they all went downhill after the room. Yeah, anyway, how is your sex life? Konami's survival horror game uh, saga is a little bit different than Resident Evil. I'm pretty sure you're well aware of this if you're watching the review. Um, but if you're not, um, I'll give you kind of a heads up. Resident Evil is more of, how to put it, it's not as subtle. Other than that, Silent Hill is more of the David Lynch atmospheric outlook. It's not like Deadly Premonition. It's not as odd, but it, it does have the same type of environment. So, uh, if you're a newcomer to the uh, Silent Hill, um, uh, I'd advise you to uh, think about it before you go ahead and purchase it. Now, Silent Hill 2 uh, follows the story uh, pretty much of the movie Silent Hill, but instead of um, having uh, the woman, you play Lewis, which um, should have been Sean Bean's character, and he would have probably done a lot better. But, um, Putting that aside, you probably played Silent Hill 2 if you're interested in, like, in the collection. And, um, is it worth it? I guess that's the big question of the, the entire review. And I would say yes. Um, simply because if you do not have Silent Hill 2 or you do not have Silent Hill 3 and you've been looking for it and they're fucking expensive now for PlayStation 2, I would suggest getting this because it's about, it's going to save you about 25 bucks because It'll cost you about $60 to get both of the PS2 games. And the be the benefits out of it, of course, is the increased uh, graphic quality. It's not the best, and you can tell it's the last generation. And I kind of wish that they added a little bit more to it. But what you get is what you get, and it's, it still is atmospheric, and it still is spooky. Uh, it does get to do some good jump scares. Um, however, there was a little bit more needed for the HD development, in my opinion, as opposed to like the Halo Collector's Edition that came out not too long ago. Those seem to have a little bit more of a powerful graphic upgrade as opposed to this, which is all right. But um, you know the the jagged edges and the fall and the blocky fog has now been uh, smoothed out, so it's a lot easier to maneuver. Um, the world in terms of uh, graphic quality and it's not as grainy. And that goes also with Silent Hill 3 which um, was expected because it is an old, it's a uh, newer game as opposed to Silent Hill 2 but um, it still is also considered a last generation in terms of graphic quality. Sound, I love the fact that they, that they um, got rid of the original voice acting. Well there is an option you can have the original voice acting for Silent Hill 2. And if you know Silent Hill 2 and the original voice acting, it was fucking horrible. It, it gives it a little bit more emotion, and believe me, any emotion is, is, is better than the original. So, um, you have new American voice actors, I'm guessing new Japanese voice actors as well, and the soundtrack is still top-notch and atmospheric if there is any uh, soundtrack at all during that time frame, of course. There's a long minutes of just droning of nothing, just silence, which, you know, gives you that atmosphere, and that's what survival horror is all about. One issue that I do have, and I really wish that they spent a lot more time on, was the controls. 
Now, don't don't give me like don't bitch at me because I'm bitching about the controls. I know it's a early 2000 survival horror game. The controls are going to be fucking bad. But the thing is that I really wish that they kind of put a little bit more invested some more time into making the controls a little bit more updated. Um, other than that, the stories have stayed pretty much the same, aside from some really, some pretty confusing puzzles, which you can easily control with the, um, settings and stuff, and the movement controls. You should be fairly well, and it, it, it's a good investment for $40 for two games that, you know, you might love, and I love, personally. And, um, while the controls and the graphics weren't as updated as I hoped, just the investment of it and to have it be able to play on your Xbox is a total benefit. So, is this game for you? If you haven't played Silent Hill 2, you don't have to play Silent Hill 1. I don't I didn't really care too much for Silent Hill 1, but if you if you want if you're interested in like the origins of si Silent like Silent Hill and the origins of um survival horror in that sense, I would definitely suggest picking picking it up. However, like I said, the movement is not the best, and the graphic quality is not superior, in a sense. And um, if you're, you know, used to games like Dead Space, or um, I guess Doom Three, or, or, or fucking Resident Evil Five, um, I, w I would suggest thinking about it before you actually go out and get it. Um, the, the controls on Dead Space are, um, you know, are so fluid and just, you know, putting, stepping backwards just a little bit might disorient you and it gets a little frustrating at times. And even being a fan of the, the survival horror genre myself, I still get frustrated at certain times, especially during intense chase sequences um, with the controls. I would suggest you go out and get this before um, it becomes a endangered species because the PlayStation 2 stuff, once that's gone, that's gone and the only option to get your Silent Hill fix is going to be Xbox or PlayStation 3. And you can't really complain with the, a little bit of the updates. Um, another problem that I did have with it is for a collection I was expecting, and maybe this is just me, but I was expecting that they'd add a little bit of bonus features. It's pretty substandard, and it just seems like you had the options menu and the two games. And I know that's that's already fitting. There's enough stuff there for you to play for hours. But I really wish that they maybe had some director's commentaries, maybe some soundtrack information, maybe something, you know, uh, to commemorate the um, collection. Because I feel like when you make a collection like this, it should be kind of full and kind of packaged. What is it? It's a weapon. It's really powerful, especially against living things. So, in terms of the games, uh, they're excellent games, even to this day. Um, the acting is a little hokey, but other than that, if you can surpass that and the, surpass the rugged, uh, not fluid control system, you should be good to go. And fans of the originals, uh, they have not fucked anything up, so... I suggest you go out and buy this. So anyway, this has been Tyler with Ron Reviews, and I hope that I can make a review soon, or something new, I don't know. It, it all depends on, um, like I said, school work and everything, so I'll do my best. And other than that, if uh, any ladies are out there, if they can read this, um, yeah, you know how to message me. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, this has been Tyler with Ron Reviews, and I'll see you all later.